Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're talking about molarity. So what exactly is it? It's just another name for concentration. It's how much solute you're putting in per how much solvent. So if you only put in a little bit of solute in your solvent, we can say that's diluted as shown right here. It's gonna be weak. Another way of looking at this is on a molecular level and you can see that there is not a whole lot of solute going on in this flask. So we can say it's diluted or low molarity. Now on the other hand, if we put in a whole lot of solute in our solvent, it's gonna become concentrated. Um, another example is right down here. You can see there's a lot of solute. This is high molarity. Okay, if we look at these two flasks, you can see that they have the same amount of solute, but they have a different amount of solvent. This one has 35 milliliters and this one has 45 milliliters. So which solution has higher molarity? Pause your video and I'll tell you in a second. Okay, let's go over the answer. So it's gonna be solution A with the flask that has less of the solvent in it. Um, the ratio is gonna be much more condensed here, therefore it's stronger, higher molarity, higher concentration. All right, so here we have four containers and I put how many of the red dots and the red dots are really representing your solute, right? This line up top is where your solvent ends. So you can see the ratios between them. So which beaker or beakers has the highest molarity, which is concentration? Go ahead and pause your video and see if you can figure this one out. All right, let's go over the answer. It's gonna be four, right? The fourth one has six red dots standing for your solute and the least amount of solvent. So this one is gonna be highly concentrated compared to the rest, which are a little bit more diluted than this one. All right, same containers, same everything going on. Let's look at a different question. Which beaker or beakers has the same molarity concentration? So pause your video and see if you can figure this one out. All right, let's go ahead and go over it. So it's gonna be one and three. If you notice, this one is all the way to the top and it has 12 dots. This one, the solvent is only halfway and it has half as much solute. So these are equivalent to the same molarity. This would be like if I had a pitcher of Kool-Aid and I poured out half, this would be the same Kool-Aid. It just would be half full, okay? All right, so we can also do calculations with molarity. So the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution is the molar concentration. And this is your formula for it. The capital N stands for molarity. A lowercase n is the moles of your solute. The V stands for volume of solution. And if you want to, you can use the triangle. So moles, molarity, and volume. A reminder how to use a triangle. Whatever your question asks for, cover that one up and then you're gonna see how to do the math. So if it is on top of each other, like moles over volume, that's divide, right? Or moles over molarity, that's divide. And if it's side by side, like molarity is next to volume, you're gonna multiply, okay? So cover up what it's asking for and then do the math for whatever's left. Or just rearrange your math equation either way you like is, is completely fine. So let's go over our units. So molarity is gonna be moles per liter and it's really important to note that it's in liters because some questions will be given to you in milliliters and we'll have to adjust that um, before we actually put it in to do our math. Volume is in liters and moles is a mole. Who would have guessed? So if there are 14 moles of uh, NaCl and 241.2 liters of solution, what is the molarity? We want molarity. So we're gonna cover that up in our triangle and we're gonna end up doing moles divided by volume. So um, our math right here is gonna be our moles, 17, divided by our volume. Our volume is already in liters, which is perfect for us. So you can just go ahead and write it in. When you type this in your calculator, the top number goes first, and then you hit divide by the bottom number, and you end up getting 0.7 moles per liter of NaCl. Let's go ahead and try another one. How many moles of magnesium hydroxide are required to make 715 liters of a 0.75 molar solution? So we're given liters, which is volume, we're given molarity, and it asks us to find moles. So let's go ahead and cover up moles, 
and you can see that we are going to be multiplying. So we're going to multiply out the volume and our molarity and we end up getting 536.25 moles of magnesium hydroxide. Let's try another one. If there is a 2.0 molar solution with 0.65 moles of solute, what is the volume in liters? So we are given moles and we are given molarity and we're asked to find volume. So let's cover up volume since that's what they want, which means we're gonna do moles divided by molarity. So go ahead and do the 0.65 moles in your calculator first and then divide by the molarity 2.0 and you end up getting 0.325 liters of solution. All right, let's step it up and do some conversion too. So how many moles of hydrogen peroxide are required to make 235 milliliters of a 3.6 molar solution? So what are we looking for here? We're looking for moles, which means we're gonna multiply, but I cannot put milliliters into my calculator and get the right answer. I have to first convert this to a liter. I can do that by either dividing by a thousand or moving my decimal three places to the left. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna do 235 divided by a thousand and I end up getting 2.35 liters. Now I have it in liters. Now I can go to my triangle and finish my problem. So I'm gonna multiply um, my liters by my 3.6 molar solution and I end up getting 0.85 moles of a hydrogen peroxide. Okay, one more that involves just a little touch of stoichiometry in it. So if 270 grams of C12H22O11 were dissolved to make 2.5 liters of solution, uh, what would the molarity of the solution be? Well, we are given grams, we are given volume, and that's pretty much it. So what are we really looking for? We're looking for molarity, right? So if I'm over here looking for molarity, I need to do moles divided by volume. Well, I have volume, so that's great, but I am not given moles. Instead, I'm given grams, but we should know how to change grams to moles. If you guys are really unfamiliar with this, I can link a video below of how to do grams to moles so you guys can have a, like, a more descriptive review on that, okay? But you're gonna do your 270 grams and you're gonna do diagonal down the molar mass. So go to the periodic table, look up each of these, multiply it by how many you have and add it all together, okay? And that gives you 342.34 grams. And that is gonna be equivalent to one mole of it. So the math, you're gonna do 270 times the one divided by the 342.34 grams and you end up getting 0.79 moles of it. So. I hope this was helpful, you guys. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and watch for more science help. Bye, everybody. See you later.